play our fastest transcription. Welcome to the Woodshed. I'm your host, Andy Brent, and we're back with some great content after a couple months of being dead. Um, I'm very excited for this podcast because it's going to be the Trumpet Podcast, and of course I play trumpet, and I love trumpet, and trumpet is my everything, and trumpet mm. is my waifu. Um, I actually named my trumpet Julia when I first got it. We've been together since uh, junior year of high school when I had a falling out with my previous trumpet, Getson. Um, her neck broke after, uh, I thought brass was, I went a little too rough on her. I thought brass was stronger, but apparently it's not. So she's just a lead pipe now. If you want to go see me play her, uh, the video will be up. Um, I've converted her into a Christian Scott horn. Mm. Very exciting stuff. Today's outro is Floater by Misnomer. Misnomer is a jazz band from Athens, Georgia, um, and this is off their first album called Neighborhood. Uh, you can check them out on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. They also have a website. Just look up Misnomer. Um, they're a great band. It gives me a lot of snarky puppy vibes. Um, I've talked to their trumpet player, who uh, graciously let me use their song as an outro. And, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. that will be at the end of the podcast. Check them out. All right, so I'm here with three beautiful, sweaty, young men. <clears throat> Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Uh, hello, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, I'm Eric. I play trumpet. Uh, I like jazz. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name's Jacob. I'm from Canada, British Columbia specifically. Uh, been playing trumpet for about 10 years. I also do like jazz. Yeah, uh... These guys are great, and I'm Leroy. I as well play the toot thing, <clears throat> the toot horn, and I am from the United States of America. I've been playing since about sixth grade, so that's decade and, and a half maybe. So yeah, that's that's all neat and fun. All right. Well, I've been playing trumpet since fifth grade, so eat it. Uh, I've oh, been yeah. playing for only 11 years, though. But I'm um, older than you. Shut the fuck Ooh. up. I, I, started in, I started in grade five also. Yeah, me too. Shut the fuck up. So let's immediately jump into what's wrong with rural areas not having music programs in elementary school. This is this is whack. <laughs> that's, for the, that's for the other one. That's for the other <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Well, since, since we have a, a Canadian here, why don't you tell us about the best trumpet player that ever came from there, Jacob? There's only one right answer to this question. Is this answering in 2018 or answering in 2050? <laughs> what? I have, wow. I have I absolutely I, no idea. I think who, I see. who are you implying there's, is the best There's only Canada. like one trumpet player that I know the location of, and that is our boy, motherfucker, Maynard Ferguson. Maynard. Let's give it up. Let's Oi. give it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big man oh, yeah. with big lungs. Big lungs. Big man with big lips. So, I I kind of want to out a few times, right? You want to talk about Maynard? I, th I think so. I, I don't know. There's there's an interesting story about Maynard that um, my one of my professors, Brad Good, um, told me about pressure playing. And uh, some guy wanted to actually I have two stories about Maynard. I guess I'll just tell both of them. Uh, Maynard wanted to know, or someone wanted to know how much pressure Maynard used. And Maynard said, well, how the hell am I supposed to show you that? And the guy said, oh, why don't you just stand behind me and then use your trumpet, like, on my face, like you're going to play. And apparently the guy's teeth broke. Now, wow. Dr. Good insists that this is Whoa. a true story. I'm not so sure. There's also another story, um, I believe is in the Bud Brisbois, uh, autobi or not autobiography, uh, biography, where... Some guy went up to Maynard after the show, a young kid, and was like, how do you play that so high? And he was like, nah, nah, nah. because, you know, that's what he talks like, obviously. And the guy saw that there was a space in Maynard Ferguson's teeth. And he's like, that must be it. 
So he goes to somewhere, I guess, and then gets a space in his tooth, and like in his front teeth. And then they, they meet up again, and Maynard, you know, is still playing, but he's got I th- either corrected his teeth or he got dentures. Yeah, I think he got it fixed. But, he, but he's still playing that high, and they're like, the guy's like, oh, but they had a I've good laugh about off. it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah I, I've also heard that story. Like, well, I um, I thought that Maynard blew out his lips like three or four times. Like he had to switch the way he played because he messed them up so bad or something. Is that not the case? I don't know. His lips, if you yeah. ever look at them in his old age, they're pretty fucked up. But well, a yeah, lot of people they, who they play look like with, a bunch of sponges. A lot of people who play with a shit ton of pressure usually do. Like if you look at uh, Louis. Louis' lips. Fucking Louis. Can you, so I heard something and I'm not really. I've heard that he put um, cuts in his mouthpiece. So he could like corkscrew it into his mm. face. Yeah, Lewis, yeah. I should say. I don't know Excuse about me. that. I, I forgot. I think I'm the one that uh, said something about that to you uh, about the oh, ridges nuts. on the, his. Yeah, I, there's a picture of it on the internet somewhere. Uh, if you look up like Louis Armstrong mouthpiece, hidden yeah, Bill, deep in the web. Bill Chase used to have problems with that, and he had, he actually had problem. He has the same problem I have, but he had his neck like inflating way too much. I believe. It was either that or it was a pressure problem. And apparently he blew his neck out, whatever the hell that means. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, had, I had like a really bad problem with my plane for a long time with pressure. And I became enlightened and I t- finally dedicated like myself. I was like, okay, this summer I'm not playing any high notes that I can't actually hit. And I lost like all of my range for a very for like mm. three months. So I could only play like literally low C to I think a D in the staff, and only by the final. And I kept with it this program that I instilled on myself. And then finally, in the last month, I was able to start playing like high again. And then by like the beginning of the school year, I was like ripping out double C's. Mm. But then I fell back into Ooh. bad habits because I couldn't practice four hours a day again. But the one problem I have not been able to fix, I have been able to, like, I know how to fix almost every problem. It's just a matter of, you know, practicing and getting in the habit. I, my neck inflates and I cannot stop it. And, like, you go on, like, Trumpet Herald or Trumpet Master, rest in peace, those sites are dead now. Um, and I was, and they're all like, oh, it's not a problem. Look at Dizzy Gillespie. And I was like, motherfucker, you don't know a single thing. But, you know, they're like, oh, Bill Chase, they all had inflaty necks. Look at them go. They're all balloon boys. Well, the problem is it, like, <laughs> knocks me out. Like, I feel lightheaded and I'll pass out. So I can't have that or just get really bad headaches. But anyway, unless someone has something to say about that. Were you using your posture? Posture. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, when I use the posture, <laughs> you're, you're referring uh, to the, the yes, maximum the airway. Over thing. The reverse so, smiles. <laughs> the reverse so smiles. Yeah. It's going to be hard to describe on the podcast. I'll have to put a video up of it. I don't actually own the, the meme version of it. But uh, what you want to do is you kind of get into a squat position almost, and you stick your ass out as far as you can, and you align your back perfectly with your ass. So you kind of like create almost a 40. So you have your le- your lower legs on the ground and with your like thighs and like back, ass and head, you create a 45 degree angle. And what this does is it allows the airways from your ass to travel directly through your intestines to your through your throat combined with your lung power um, will allow a lot more air access. And when you're bending over like this, it actually compresses the air a lot. So this is like the secret <laughs> technique to all high notes. And I'll have to, I'll, I'll, wow. when we get this video released, I'll put a, a picture of it. But if you want to play like triple C's, I don't know if I can bust one up right now. I got to get in the stance. We could all try oh. being the trumpet cast. <laughs> there, there's, that, that wasn't even Whoa. close. I'm, I'm using like a one C right now. So my... I'd have to work up to it. See, that's the beauty of the stance. He was definitely using the stance. Yeah, at that it sounded moment. like the I was trying. Just stance. I, was trying. Uh, I just envisioned some like weird crouch thing. Like I couldn't really picture it. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's like yeah. it's like you're doing a squat, but instead of keeping your back straight, you kind of lean forward a little. I don't even know if I can find it. Oh, Unless God. Leroy, do you Wait, have quick that, access on your phone? Because you made that meme. Andy, is that the that meme? Yeah, no, the I meme. Didn't. Is that that picture though? 
Oh, the well, picture. I the profile pic. Oh, what's, fuck. What's oh, that yeah, mean? Now I know what you're talking about. Oh. oh Let me get that. And then I'll link it to the Discord chat. So you guys keep talking about high note. Or I'll keep talking. I'll Andy. fill some space while I look for this thing. <laughs> what? I was having well, some high note problem. You guys go ahead. Fucking what was that, Jacob? Uh, just wasn't wasn't this from like a meme video? This video that you were in, like a video of you, Andy, doing this dance a few months back. Uh, okay, I, I mean, I think I'm in I can, a lot of fucking videos now, but I know it's like it was it was a <clears throat> staple. I forget it was like such an old meme too. I forget where it's like that song and you're spinning oh, the in the da, stars. Da, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is that uh, the, shooting that the stars? Stand? Yep, that's that one. That's oh, the stance. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, the no. original video shows me like fully doing it. <laughs> right. I think I saw that too. Um, but yeah. yeah, no, I I, I kind of so that enables you to to play high notes easier. Yes, yes. it is the secret. Absolutely. Wow. That, you know, you combine that with the prana and pranayama uh, that Maynard Ferguson <laughs> always talked about, and you'll be good. I do can't. some Bud Brisk voice exercises. <laughs> oh. I've Too I've plastic. heavily studied this, and after years of scientific research, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee <laughs> you, this is the way all trumpet players should be playing. Just, um, well, I want to see a big band, a big band trumpet section <laughs> playing like that. Just <laughs> I, would, five I, would, I would break out into tears <laughs> if I saw that. I would, oh man, <laughs> what... Uh, I just a little more power. I just need a little more power, and I'll be able to send, assemble a ship hosting big band. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's angled a little. It looks like I'm really going for it. Yeah, um, like horizontal to the ground. It's pretty great. Uh, I used to be able to play like a, a triple C. Like, well, you know, not play, but it you was know, a squeak. Wink, wink. wink. Um, and I used to be able to like kick my foot and I, I couldn't make it sound just like I was kicking a small puppy. It was a great gag in high school. Oh wow. Yeah, Sounds it was, hilarious. It was, it was so great. I was, everyone loved me. <laughs> Mostly it was just the trumpet players. Everyone else was like, Andy, shut the fuck up. You're so loud. Well, so back high. to this, back to this pressure problem in school. Uh, back when I was in high school, I was kind of the workhorse for the high notes, unfortunately. Because I think I was one of the few. Unfortunately, ones that actually, well, I mean, it was great at first, you know, for like the first few years. But then once I got into college, and then it was like, oh hey, yeah, this freshman kid joins jazz band. He could blow high notes. Let's just make him do that the whole time, you know. Yeah, true. Once you play lead horn for like six years, you're kind of like, God, I want to do. I want to sit back and play like third and just have some toasty little melodies. I mean, harmonies I could play over here and relax for a bit. But anyways. I had this high note pressure problem where I would just like blow my stamina out mm -hmm. too fast from from uh, pressing against my face so much, and then finally I had a teacher that was like, "Well, we would work on these like you know etudes and whatnot during college, they're just, which weren't they're just like weren't, log tones." Yeah, and they weren't like really high notes or anything, so I couldn't address the problem as much as I wanted to. We'd be too busy working on other things. But um, I eventually told him one day, like near the end of the semester. Hey man, help me out with this since I already have my jury stuff down and whatnot. And so he told me the secret that was like, yo, just play really low notes all the time. Just True. practice as low as you can and then play high notes and then like do the extremes one after another. So play some high note stuff and then right afterward just blow some pedal tones. Yeah. And go right back to the high notes. It's like the it's weird and it kind of shocks your system at first, but it's almost like the uh the weird training where people dunk their hands in hot water and then cold water and whatnot. You know what I'm talking about? That's actually yeah, what I started sure. doing. I did a uh, octave lip slur training and that really helps my range. I'm in no condition to do that right now. My low range sucks ass. I mean, I'm lucky if I can get an F sharp pedal tones are out for me. I mean, there's, you know, there's all the false pedals. That's because you're using like, those little teensy shallow mouthpieces no i don't i don't use those shallow mouthpieces i only do that for gags really because right now I, i'm not really satisfied with the mouthpiece i have right now i think i do want a no one smaller rim that's true but right now i'm using like a yamaha let's see what is this it's a yamaha let me guess like 34b or something 14b4 oh. um 
But I mean, I usually play, I used to play on like a Megatone 3C. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Who actually thinks Megatones, megatones do anything? They're sham. What's a Megatone? Okay. Like the sleeve, <laughs> like a thick sleeve around the, uh, the shank. The mouthpiece. Oh, I've like seen okay, those yeah, mouthpieces yeah, yeah. that are yeah, like I think I have. elongated instead of the little cup shape. It goes I, like into this little ov ovular thing. Yeah, I got my yes. Megatone 3C because I lost my original 3C. I'm actually pretty sure I know who stole it, but that was years ago. But anyway, I'm very sure it does like little shit to your sound. You know what I think it might do? I was thinking of getting like a different. Well, when I was thinking of getting lead mouthpieces. Cause I, I wanted oh, one God. just, just, just to, cause I play lead and I was like, yeah, when I'm marching around on the field, I don't really care what I'm using. I just want to hit those notes. I don't want to, it doesn't matter if I sound good. No one's going to care. But, um, I think like if on this jet tone I have, which, okay, let me tell you, it sounds like absolute shit, but it is so much fun to play on cause you can just rip up there so fast and loud. But like, if you had like, Cause if you've seen this Megatone, there's like fucking nothing on it. It's a Bill Chase model. Shout outs to my homie. I bought it as a joke and then liked it. Uh, but um <laughs> like that maybe there would be some like some difference to like counteract the shittiness of it. But I think megatones are almost all a sham. I agree. Andy, you should so, try uh you should try going shallower in your uh the same rim as your regular mouthpiece for lead pieces. Like if you play a three C you get like a three D. I think I think I want I don't know I feel like I want a, a a a more of an inner rim. See the problem is in here in Colorado there's like nowhere to go to even try mouthpieces. You go to like a shop and they're like, "Oh yeah, can I try your mouthpieces?" It's like, "Yeah, all right. We got a 3C. Uh we got a 7C. Yeah, we got a what is this? A 13A 4A shell key. Do you want you want to try?" I'm like <laughs> Motherfucker, these are the like the entry level seven C bullshit. Um, but like, there's nothing to try over here, and it's very frustrating. Um, literally, the reason I have this Bill Chase one is because I was like, okay, I'm just gonna rent stuff from or buy stuff from Amazon and then return it with like a the cleaning fee, which is like five bucks, and that's like the only thing I can do. But uh, I ended up just keeping my Bill Chase one, and then I never got another mouthpiece because I just haven't had time. But I think I have to make like a road trip. But uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of crazy ones. I'm kind of interested in trying some of the crazy ones. There's like, have you guys seen the asymmetric mouthpiece? Uh, yeah, the wedge? I don't know what you're talking about. A wedge? Wedge mouthpiece? N no, no, no. The, the no, asymmetric. Kind of, oh, asymmetric. Uh, I kind of want to try the wedge too. I feel like... That's what I want to try. I hear good things about the wedge. I feel like it would do not what I want to my sound. But the asymmetric mouthpiece... So if you just look at your mouthpiece... Um, going down the shank or like, what do you call this? The head, the f the, I don't, cup, the cup, the, the bowl, the board, the cup, the cup, the cup, <laughs> the head and the board. shaft. Yeah, but so if you look at it that way, and you just cut right down the middle, imagine like the top, the well, the top or bottom half is just completely flat metal, so yeah. you only get half the cup. And it's supposed it's to be for, for like people with directly like directly straight or down, like with your air. Yeah, and it's also for people with like, you know, if you think back to Arbins, like a, a one third, two thirds, someone with like, I think it, they want it on the bottom or some. I'd like to try that, but I feel like I'd have to change my embouchure for it, but just yeah. to have fun. Or you can try fucking, if megatones weren't enough, you can go try James Moore. Is it James Morrison? Don't I think talk it is. about that mouthpiece, please. The water where you fill <laughs> you fill your cup with water and you what? play like the what? inner workings of your cup. That's a good if one. If I could do an Australian accent, he's <laughs> I'm not even gonna try. He's that talking boy. about how it how it somehow makes it like more sonorous. I think that's the word he keeps using over and over. It's something <laughs> about how it like how it sings and how the water like carries your tone or something like that. It's like it, I, it vibrates I, differently because it's water instead of metal. And you're like, all right, man. This is I, I fucking <laughs> love his playing. Like his tone and technique are amazing. 
But for some reason, I just hate all the music he puts out. Like, I just can't oh, get into it. Oh, come on. Some of it's great, man. Well, some of it, yeah. but, like, overall, like, it just sounds kind of sterile like to it. me. Yeah. I just don't understand no, totally how is. Dude Man can shred on 40 instruments better than I can on any. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I love that. <laughs> so we're talking about the Snappy 2. I think it's just the promo video, but he yeah. he plays every single instrument on the album except per, uh, percussion. But the video, the promo video is pretty great because he'll be like, so they green screen him. So he's playing every single part and you just see a, a big whole band. big, a whole big <laughs> band. And it's just him. Like he's and, there's and like, like, he looks at himself, like taking solos. Yeah. 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 And like, so he's like, oh, oh that's he, so like, great. <laughs> it's himself. so, yeah, yeah it's, like it's close it's, up on the trombone section, laughing their ass off. It's like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's good. It's just him like jacking himself off. It's it's weird. It's weird, man. That's kind of how I, I feel about James Morrison's uh, whole music in general. I don't know. Just always feels like him jacking himself off. Not Have you heard what he has a really good duo album, like piano plus him. And yeah, his like contemporary it's really good. stuff is great. Well, there's some I just have... just kind of just standard stuff on there that I I don't know. I really dug when I listened to it. I haven't got into him too much. I just did a quick glance. I don't think he's as show offy. Yeah, uh, we're yeah. We'll just we'll just dig into this. I don't think he's as show offy as like Arturo Sandoval. I have a lot of respect for that man, but someone pointed this out to me, and then I was forced to agree. At first, I thought it was just that I didn't really like his genre of music, but it really is. He just always has to show off. It feels like. He just can't be outdone, and just all the time. Ugh. Have you? Has anyone seen him uh, like a live show of him and his band? Who Arturo? Yeah, no. like he still tours no. pretty frequently. But they're they're kind of all the the same way. It's just like oh, all no, guys, no. all guys shredding, and I mean, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, I agree. I agree. I think he goes for show a lot. He also gets and really that's... defensive in uh, YouTube comments. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but he, oh, shit. he himself goes into YouTube comments and uh, oh, wow. yells at the people <laughs> who are criticizing him. You can he's say like, that. <laughs> he's like, if you think you can do better, you do it. Yeah. That would be. <laughs> Is this still James Morrison or Arturo? Arturo. We're talking about, talking Arturo. about Arturo. Oh, okay, okay. I see. Um, This kind of brings another subject I wanted to talk about. So generally what I have found, because when I was in high school, you know, I, all I wanted to listen to was high note stuff. And I was, um, oh man. Oh, there's a difference between like lead players and like soloists. So in my personal opinion, like if I think of people like John Faddis, um, uh, he's a little, he's all right. But like Lynn Biviano, especially. So this motherfucker... So the point I'm making is a lot of lead players, that's all they can do. And that's all they solo. They can't really do anything else. Lynn Biviano, Biviano is the prime example of this. And I talked about this in an earlier video. So there's a lot of complaints about Lynn. So he's got a great lead sound. And it sounds very distinct. It doesn't sound like a trumpet. It sounds like... It kind of sounds like uh, a G Bugle from Drum Corps. But it's, it's amazing. But all of his solos are just all above the staff. He cannot go below the staff. Uh -oh. And when he's playing in these big bands, he only plays the high notes. And there's this video I'll link where he only plays like these hits. He plays nothing else. Like and I'm he watching only comes it right off now. these hits. And what he does is, and this is hilarious. I can, you can probably check on the Wikipedia. I'll have to make sure. But if you look at his Wikipedia, it lists him as like Limbiviamo. Viviano is a tambourinist and a trumpet player. And because oh, yeah. whenever he's not playing, he fucking jacks around this tambourine he goes like ham. an absolute madman. Like he, it's like a seizure. And you'll you'll hear like the tenor sax playing, but he'll be in the <laughs> background just going insane. <laughs> and it's like he he's the epitome. Yeah, it's that one. Yeah. The epitome of lead trumpet playing. He just has to be in the spotlight all the time. And I wish if you want to see one of the best videos of him, it's called um, Dancing Men. And it's in a, a uh, like a video. It's in the video series of Buddy Rich that was taken off YouTube, uh, like a documentary on his drumming. I know they have like a, a drum cam, too. But at the 
end of Dancing Men, he plays some crazy licks and they sound so weird. But there's a lot of lead trumpet players that just suffer from this. It seems like all they can do is play high. And that's one of the things I don't like with uh, like lead playing. Like Leroy was saying, like uh, at the one of the bands here I play sometimes in at CU is the basketball pep band. And it's like everything's above the staff and you never go below the staff. And it's like, you know, I'd like to use my full range. I just don't want to fucking it blast it 24-7. Yeah. I think that yeah. I think that has changed a lot now versus maybe like 50 years ago. Like I think of the, the <coughs> lead players now, like Ryan Kaiser and Lincoln Center and like Wayne. I was going to say Ryan Kaiser. Wayne Bergeron yeah. and like Seneca Black. Um, I think all those guys like – in in order to be like be such precise lead players, you need to know a lot of the vocabulary and the the style and stuff. And I think that uh, comes along with soloing a lot of the time. But I think I think especially in the past, uh, you had lead players who yeah, if they're if they took solos, it was just them playing lead, pretty much. Another um, one is Von um, Nark. Von Nark. He has <laughs> he has an. Do you know who that is? No, it's a great name. Oh. Um, I've not, I only heard him because of spot, uh, uh, gosh, what is oh, this guy? Oh, Pandora. Um, yeah. he played with Dizzy Gillespie, I believe. And he named his album something special because Dizzy Gillespie called Von Nark something special. Um, if you're going to check out the album, I would start with, uh, Sunrise, Sunset or, uh, Work Song. Get past the intro because there's the intro where he plays like, five octaves of a C just as the intro it's it's fucking stupid how tasty but if you listen his lower register is so tasty it's just so like fluid and liquidy and then he goes up into the higher register on the head and it's really great it's amazing and then the rest of the solo is just look at how high I can play I can play high look at me look at me go here I go here I am and it's just it's disgusting it's it's gross and I I really love uh, lead players like uh, I almost said Snarky Puppy. Uh, wh- what's his th- ah shit? Snooky Young, amazing. He should have made more. He should have made more albums by himself, not with the Tonight Show band, because he is killing. Um, Cootie Williams. I haven't listened to him yet. I think he. I, I feel like he's similar to Snooky Young. Uh, Bill Chase is one of my yeah. idols, and he he plays the whole register. He plays a lot of the high, but he's very tasteful about it. Oh my boy! I've just I got I, I took a very I I fasted from high note playing for a long time. I was like I can't have this corrupt me, and I got I just got back into Bill Chase, and holy oh my gosh, it's so nice. And let me is it- here. What do you guys think? Oh, sorry, Leroy, do you want to say something? I just wanted to say, is it too meme to name drop Bobby Shue as a good player? Yes. It is. I, I have not talked, I have not listened to Rice Boy much yet. Um, I'm referring to how he says you want to play like you're spitting a rice off your lips. But oh, I no. think the shoehorn is the dumbest fucking thing I have ever heard. Oh. I think it's just awful. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that was uh, a very small. I I don't think people think of that when they think of him. To be honest. No, no, no. I think that was like I, a stupid gimmicky thing that he did for ten seconds. Yeah, I I mean, it might it might just be me. I mean, I haven't like looked into him that hard, but that video pisses me I off think, so much. I think Everyone's Monet like, made that. innovation. I think that was a Monet creation. I really, if you, it sounds more like a Shargal creation. If you want to hear a good Bobby Shoe which is probably still also a meme thing to say, but it, it would be that Pat Metheny song that he plays um, with the Bob Kerno big band. I'm trying to think of the name. Minuano? Min, Min, Minuano, yeah. 6-8? It's a great solo. Yeah. It's a That's hard it. solo. Oh. Eh. Eh. That, so, that, we should all listen to the album because that has a stacked trumpet section. That has Wayne, yes, it does. Bobby Shue. Link, link it in the group chat later. Yeah. Um, I sent a, a Bobby Shoe tune. I'll, I'll listen to it. Look, look at that hair. I know, um, that's so good. God. So, 
Let, I want to know you guys. I know we're we're on lead trumpet for a while, but I want to know your guys' opinion of Maynard Ferguson as like. In my personal opinion, I believe he was more important as like the pushing point for a lot of new artists and lead trumpet players. Like he made mm. lead trumpet playing like you know way bigger than it was. You know he's ba- he was like a Cat Anderson. You know. I feel he was more important as a band leader for that reason because I I think his older solos back when his hair wasn't white and gray are just kind of painful to listen to. I don't know if the uh, recordings I have like are bad quality, but like his tone is kind of gross. And then all the older ones where he's just playing like rock tunes, it's like he sounds great, but then the solos kind of die in virtuosity. Or well creativity i guess i should say does anyone feel similar i i agree somewhat i disagree i think on his old his old stuff i think uh i think when he was playing <coughs> like more bebop stuff i i was i'm pretty into a lot of that i'm not as into the like rock fusion bill chase Maynard ferguson stuff as as you are um but i oh, think you. I agree what you said that I think he's a pretty big influence on a lot of a lot of players now. Um, and basically held as like a god in those communities in a lot of ways. <clears throat> well, he is to basically every yeah. high school marching band trumpet player ever as well. Yeah. Because once they find him, they're like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> like, you know. But um, he's great, man. The, the older stuff is like, like uh, you were just saying, Eric, is... I like the more bebop, more swing type stuff that he did. That was definitely not, you know, the Rocky theme is great and all. Yeah. But but I like the the more jazzy stuff. Like uh, Conquistador was a good track. That was oh good. yeah, that's that's like the uh, the album I'm specifically thinking of. Let me let me find. It. I like one it's called like, like the new, statue, right? New sounds of Maynard Ferguson. I, I think that's that pretty, a great one. That's that golden album, isn't it? <clears throat> golden looking. No, nah, it's just like him sitting on a box or something. Is this back when he was still a twig or before he ballooned up? Yeah, it was like he's. It looks like he's like half. He's oh, half blown. Half twig. Half. <laughs> half. Half blown. Uh, 1963. Where Where is this fucking album? I gotta find it now. It's like. <laughs> Sorry, we're it's, talking about him. That Maynard? Is that, that, is that, is that <laughs> Hello, Maynard? Maynard. Is, that, is that Maynard? Is that the ghost Welcome. of Maynard Ferguson? <laughs> He's Welcome. just in the corner over here. Doing I'm some trying. cocaine. Pissed off we're talking about him. Did he do cocaine? If it probably did. I figured all man? those all those <laughs> rock those like rock players did cocaine, I assumed. He dressed like a pimp half the time. He had to have, dude. Yeah, the the Newport Sweet. Man, he has a huge fucking forehead, doesn't he? Uh, <laughs> Newport yeah. Sweet, I hate. I'm trying to find. There's like an album. It's the album where he plays Maynard Ferguson, the tune. Mm. Which I also despise. Yeah, that's that's a pretty masturbatory tune. It's an it's a edgy tune. Yeah, back when his hair was like brown. I don't do, I don't I don't fuck with that. You see, when he, when his he started going gray, faded with his hair color. Jazz Masters Fifty Two. That was a shitty album. But I liked the. Uh, there's this one. Oh, the Cash Cashier Cashmere Cat Cash Cash Cheshire. Cashmere. Da da yeah, da. That's, da da da. That song is amazing. It's like oh, oh hot hot. Good shit. All right. Um, so why why don't we talk about tone? Yeah. So, mm. so uh, one of the things I noticed with tone for me is it can make it or break it for me. Like, you know, Clark Terry is one of the greatest trumpet players, flugelhornist teachers of all time. I'm not going to argue that. Uh, I mean, he's the reason a lot of trumpet players exist today. 
or existed back then too. His tone, however, especially on Flugel, is just absolutely gross to me. Especially it in sounds, his later years, I think. It sounds like Keith Jarrett through a trumpet. Oh, God, I'm no. sorry, Leroy. But it's like, yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's a yeah sound. Nye. Nye. <laughs> and I that's, just that's what Keith sounds like. <laughs> I, I, I hate it. And the same thing with. Uh, uh, shit. Who's that guy who just got arrested for cocaine? Roy Hargrove. Uh, yes, Roy Hargrove and. Uh, Troy Williams, uh, trombone shorty. Uh, now, I don't like Roy Hargrove and Trauma and Shorty for another reason, which is I feel like they play not enough for themselves, and they're just kind of too poppy for me, and I just don't really care for it. It's oh, just man. I, you're not listening to the right Roy Hargrove. Dude, I oh, love... Man, dude, I, check out RH I, Factor. He's just... I've heard it, and I just hate it. Have you, you don't so like about, RH Factor. Oh. Listen, listen to like the stuff when he was coming up when uh, in, like... What was, what was that post-bop? Neo-bop? Like the '90s bop, neo team. soul, uh, neo neo bop. <laughs> I think that's a real, I think that's a real thing. Be, is it? Oh my god! Bebop, hard bop, post bop, neo bop, new bop, neo neo bop jazz. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, neo bop. Yeah, I'll I don't know. Like, I think I think he was one of one of like the leading like young players in the <coughs> early '90s. Uh, he was playing some hot shit. I'll look into it. But regardless, uh, Trombone Shorty, I believe his name is Troy Real Williams, has made a jazz album, and it's it's pretty tasty. But I just his tone, especially his, um, on trumpet, on contemporary people. Uh, yeah, I yeah. just I think it's gross. As say, it sounds a lot like Clark Terry, sorta, and a lot of contemporary players are kind of going this direction of, with this kind of sound, and I just, I am not hip with it. I, I just, I just can't. Whereas other people, like I was talking to these guys earlier, Lester Bowie, or Bowie, as, uh, see, I'm not sure how you say his name because it's pronounced Bowie, but um, we had. Uh, Hugh Ragin, I believe his name was. I'm not sure on the pronunciation of the last name. But uh, Lester Bowie was his mentor, and he pronounced it Bowie, so who knows. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, his tone is so beautiful and, like, tasty, and I love it. And I can, like, consume it as a juicy meal. It's like the freshest tomato. Um, Look. But I don't actually like his music, but I can't stop listening to it because of his tone. Look, anyone you want, else? You anyone want a good tone from a trumpet player. You go early back, you're going to have Fats Navarro and Clifford Brown. There's some good-ass tone right there. Mm. Clifford Brown. My man Brown mm. has I don't know if the best tone. Eh. That's all I'm saying. And then once you move um, forward a little bit, we could skip Miles. I'm sorry, Miles, but we're skipping. No, early Miles. What? I like early Miles. I, early I feel miles. like Miles' gotta... like greatest asset is his tone. Uh, no, you it, could it's... No, early Miles. I think after bitches, I, no, no, I love. I love Miles' tone. Sounds like he a just tube. uses. A, how sounds do you like even a metal know? Tube. Was, uh, How do you even know? He well, yeah, it sounds like a metal tube because he just uses the fucking Harmon mute the entire time. <laughs> when we move forward. Let's, I'm, I'm skipping Miles, like I said. Um, oh, I want to throw down. We can talk down. about Miles I'm, later. We, we can talk about Miles, about Miles later. Chet Baker. But, no, no, uh, yeah, you're good. You're right. But um, I was going to go on to really someone too that much, no one though. ever really wants to talk about for some reason. But uh, Chris, Chris Boddy. Mm. Has Tasty. I thought it was always Bodie. But you don't like his tone? No, he has that tone. It is, mm, it's like cream. I just don't get it. Like, I, just... I feel like he's like... I, I still, I'm saving him for like a really in-depth look, but I feel like he's almost a third, kind of third wavy um, from a lot of my, the stuff I've heard. Maybe it's just because I've seen so many of stuff of him playing like I, classical. I just equate him to like those singers who just put out like romantic love song albums See, all the time. That's, that's he's, but he's what really I good thought at he was. was. I, he's yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I thought he was like another, 
No, like playing for the masses and just kind of like appealing to the audience, like a Kenny G like the type Kenny guy. G of trumpet. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's actually just fucking amazing. And I, one of my favorite moments when I just listened to him for a couple hours was, um, I think it was Flamenco Sketches. And he's like, all right, everyone. And it's this huge crowd. He's like, all right, everyone ready for, for some miles? Who loves some miles? And there's just like, six people <laughs> yeah it's just like just like no one and you can see he just looks so sad but he does it anyway and i was like th- i appreciate your sacrifice but holy shit he's good i can't wait to i just have like a playlist of i think i'm at i whittled it down to 1800 tunes but I'm getting through my playlist of people to listen to. It's mostly trumpet players. Does he put out, does most of what he put out fall under that like ballads stereotype yeah. that I feel he has? Well, or is it? Yep. I would say. I, yeah. I know he, he plays outside the box sometimes, but. Uh, he has one or <coughs> two albums that are kind of like, I don't know how else to say it other than like experimental smooth jazz. Okay. <laughs> like I have no other, I have no other way oh my to gosh. explain it than that. I <laughs> but like it. That's kind of what it is. Well, it it's like great. light funk, if that makes sense. Huh. So, like oh, that's what I... Almost. So, uh, gosh, shit, what's his name? Uh, you were Someone was playing him earlier. Uh, sp- who wrote Spanish Flea? Uh, Herbie, Herb Alper. Yeah, yeah Herb, Herb Alper. I think he's like the smooth jazz of Latin. Smooth he's just, Latin jazz. Smooth oh, boss. It's, it's so <laughs> gross. My, that's what my grandmother listens to. She's like, oh, you play trumpet. Oh, I have all of these Herb Alpert records. And I'm like, oh, f- Herb oh, Alpert, no. if you go to any uh, like thrift store that has records, about like 5% of all the records they have will be Herb Alpert records. It's true. There's this one, I think it's Casino Royale, but there's this video. And you know he's got like that shitty, like, you know, there's... Pretty thin. Pretty there's, thin tone. There's good, you know, you never want to say an amateur is bad, but, oh gosh, his is ugly. It is, it's pretty bad, but he's, uh, gosh, there's this song, it probably goes to like a high G. It was like, ba da wa da and then the music video, it shows him playing it with a totally <laughs> different tone. I'm like, motherfucker, that ain't you. Yeah, that's Casino That right ain't now. you. I think yeah, it goes up to a B flat, hilarious. double B flat. It's a double B flat? Yeah. It's like C, F, B flat, G, uh, starting on a high C. Yeah, it is a B flat. Shit. No way. That's like, that's not you. I, <laughs> the first time I saw that, I was cracking. I was like, there's no fucking way. Oh, but I, before I forget, I want to shout out... Um, a YouTube channel called Pink Baby Monster. Now this is uh, I Mark Gold. Um, he's a uh. trumpet professor that kind of teaches around. I guess he's he's been seen with Adam Rappa and uh, I think it was Adam Rappa and uh, Thomas Ganch. He has a YouTube channel where he literally just shit posts, and it's not jazz most of the time, unfortunately. But he's got shit like. He made a mute that looks like a dildo, and it's called I'm an Inventor. Um, he's got the uh, Entrada uh, piece, and it sounds like shit, and he like makes it Latin at one point, or like a samba, I can't remember. Um, but there's these videos called The Way of the Blade, and I don't want to spoil them. And the best one, the audio is actually desynced, and it's the only time where I ever filed a report to YouTube. I was like, please fix this audio. But it is, uh-huh. it is, they are amazing videos and they're just crazy. Um, there's one called The Way of the Blade for Natural Trumpet, where the lesson is the Godfather and he ends up just shooting the guy in the foot. It's, it is, it's a great okay. shit post. It's pretty old. Wow. It's pretty old, but definitely check them out. Pink Baby Monster on YouTube. I just, Shout I want to throw that out there. Uh, I'll <sighs> say, I'll say something about tone. All right. Uh, I think. Uh, I'll see if you guys agree, but I think there's definitely been more of a movement in the past 10 years or so to have uh, the presence of air in your tone be uh, more prominent. 
than before. Like, I feel like you have people like uh, Marquise Hill, like we were talking about earlier, and Ambrose, uh, who have these, like, really uh, light, airy tones. Uh, and I like it a lot. I, I think it's a really cool sound. Uh, it's the vel- velvety almost. Yeah. I So the... I think I like there's that. a difference between air in your tone and because I kind of think of the way Wynton Marsalis plays whenever I kind of think of that because he his sounds like cushioning and, and it, yeah. a lot of people who play mo- right. these huge monets kind of have that and I hate it. I It absolutely disgusts me. That weird but, like, um, pillowy sound? Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. there those are like... I feel like those are those are close, but they're they're definitely two yes. distinct things. No, I I, um, I I agree with you definitely yeah. that there is that push toward it. Le- I just again, Lester Bowie used a shit ton of fucking air, and the way he plays in the upper register, I that's what I feel like is the way. That is the way, my brothers. It is. It's like you can hear the air in it. Like, but I also feel like there's this trend. And it's sort of like kind of what I was saying earlier, but uh, when also when a lot of players go higher up, and this goes for Roy Hargrove, uh, uh, da, 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 Trombone Shorty, and Christian Scott, they kind of take the same color. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but it sounds really like a... I don't know. They just kind of all have the same way of approaching the high range. And you can especially hear this in the way that um, Terrence Blanchard is that is that Blanchard, yeah, right? Blanchard. That's, yeah. That's correct. Blanch, Blanchard, how he approaches uh, high notes with a lot of like huge intervals and almost like half valving. It sounds like on the way there is yeah. a really distinct kind of sound I hear in a lot of contemporary players, and I haven't gotten too much into contemporary playing yet but uh that's what i'm hearing so far i'm so, yeah i'm so stuck on the the classics uh i yeah. just i just started listening to nat adderley and holy shit i think i might switch to cornet uh keon harold also has a bit of that like christian scott that kind of high register almost ha- <laughs> half half valve thing yeah i think christian I th- go ahead sorry i just i think in the context of uh the music that they're playing, they often do it in ways that's kind of stylistic, but I don't know if they were just playing something else that it would necessarily be the right choice. Yeah. Yeah. I think Christian Scott, uh, has a really unique sound and I think it comes partly from, uh, those, he has those like really heavy custom Adams horns with all the bracing (laughs) and stuff. And then, um, and they're just weird shapes. And like, yeah, they're they just like look ridiculous. Um, and I think a lot of people, if they were to play something like that, they would maybe fall under that like Monet thing you were talking about earlier, where it's maybe a little stuffy kind of. But he uses right. he uses so much air. Like you can watch you can watch some videos of where he takes the horn off his face, and you can see like steam coming out of his mouth. Um, like just cause he's, I don't know if he's using so much pressure or what, but he just uses, like, he just pumps so much air through those horns, uh, and just like really lights them up. It's like a really unique sound that, that you don't really hear people playing that way on those horns. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he has that kind of stereotypical sound either. Um, same with like Terrence, uh, 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 oh gosh, I'm getting mixed up. Uh, Blanchard, Blanchard. Yeah. Um. He he kind of he plays on a monet too, but he doesn't have that stereotypical sound. Yeah, he has like a soft airiness to his sound versus his his intervals are his interval jumping is beautiful. I can't I can't really get behind his music. It's just kind of somber. Same with uh, Christian Scott. There's two things I have a huge problem with with him. Uh, one is stretch music to me is just kind of boring. It almost sounds like just tra- he says it's all music fused together. I very much disagree with that. I don't know why he said that. I think Maybe he just I'm said missing. that because he's like a I, I kind of see him as a bit of like a Kanye personality. Like he just kind of says <laughs> crazy things and then sees I how mean, people react. Maybe I'm misquoting something. Maybe he said all cultures, but I think 
No, it's not. <clears throat> it just kind of sounds like like trance music, but for jazz. Yeah. And also, a lot of the music I listen to from him, he just uses grace notes on every fucking note. You listen to him, especially like anything that's like highly rated on YouTube, because that's that's the way I get most of this music for people I'm not like way into. Like he grace notes every single fucking thing. It's like he just learned how to play jazz in high school. It's like, holy shit, I can do this and make it sound jazzy. Let's do it on every note. I, I hate it. Yeah, I, that too. I think I think he so Christian <laughs> Scott definitely uh, I think had more of a modern jazz traditional modern jazz style in earlier in his career, like up until around maybe stretch music or the album before. Uh, mm -hmm. And then and then when he started making that stuff, I think I think like the stretch music thing and the trilogy he did after I forget what he called it. But um, I feel like it's it's very very different from jazz and the solos in it serve a very very different purpose than solos in it, jazz music yeah i agree it's like it's almost like he's trying to it's not free jazz but it's kind of like almost he's trying to create an atmosphere yeah because i i watched this one solo where for a whole minute he just did trills like a chromatic i just i just got i can fucking do it right here he just like chromatically went down like you know yeah. and it's just like nice i was like cool <laughs> it was just cool i but, really like uh christian scott in kind of more hip-hop context like i, don't I know feel if you've, yeah you've heard, i feel like that would be i think heard. you i think you hit the yet, nail on the head with trance music yeah that's kind of how yeah. i feel about that stuff too atmospheric um, ref reflect respond now like with Robert Glasper, they've just released a few singles. Christian Scott is in that group. I would really check that out if you guys haven't. Mm. Yeah, um, but cool. he's he's kind of he's less featured as a soloist in the singles that have been released, and lots of effects on his trumpet and just kind of more vibe <laughs> stuff. And he really fits into that cool. super well. Yeah. Speaking of effects on trumpet, uh, my boy oh. Donnie E. Yeah, boy, you know he was coming. Ellis he was gang, coming. Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang. Oh my gosh, get out of here, Wyatt. So, <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, oh, oh, you know what we have to, I just remembered something. Snooky oh, poopy? Oh, no. But anyway, before we get into that subject, I should Snooky. probably look her up. I gotta figure out her name. <clears throat> but what about a uh, Sarah, it was like Sarah Belair. Is that what you're talking about? Probably. Are we, we're talking about the machine yeah. trumpet? Okay, we'll get to her in a minute. So I um, I use, uh, if you guys want to talk about pedals, uh, I use pedals from Oh, time yeah, to yeah, time. yeah. No, you t talk about uh, please, some of the shit please. you do, actually. I want to learn. So I'm in a, I'm playing in a, a band that's kind of, it's hard to define uh, what kind of music it is, but it, it's probably close to progressive metal. Uh, and I playing trumpet in that is kind of an interesting role. And I use a lot of distortion and octave and fuzz and echo. Um, and it's been an interesting so you're couple months doing like a solo guitar line, but on a trumpet. It's it, it can sound like a guitar. Yeah, it's it's kind of somewhere in between like guitar and synth sounds. Um, but that's that's been interesting. I kind of just bought some stuff and started fooling around with it, and that's that's been an interesting uh, challenge. Uh, I, yeah. I I love it. Um, Do you guys ever I use pedals? I I I not actual pedals because mm -hmm. I just don't have the equipment for it. But I mean, I've played like you know, I've had my headphones on and played in my mic while putting it into like some sort of. Um, I mean, I've upgraded from GarageBand now, but, you know, changing the sound that way. I think it's, I, I love it. I just feel like that can't, you don't want it to become a gimmick, though. You don't want to become the Timmy Trumpet of jazz. Uh, dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for Timmy yeah. Trumpet. Oh, good, um, good, good on him. I've used a pedal, one pedal so far, and it was just on a couple pop gigs. I was, like, joining a cover band. And I, and I got the opportunity to solo. Yeah. It just kind of fit the soundscape. But I so I borrowed a bass envelope filter, the MXR, one, oh. and 
uh, like did like 24 karat magic actually. And so I was doing like some synthy type doubling and it was Very cool. super sick, super cool. And it was like my first time. So I did just ex- mic XLR little adapter right into the pedal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And a nice. DI to the board. Yeah. The most I've ever messed around with was like a, a delay pedal that I have yeah. and, uh, and a loop pedal. Which that didn't really equate to much other than maybe like, you know, some little chord hits that I could make and then solo yeah, or, true. or something like that. So there's not too much you can do other than, hey, look, let me stack thirds or fourths on this little line with a loop yeah. pedal. You know, there's not much else you can really do with it. Do you guys listen I, to players that use pedals or electronics a lot? I've been, I mean, we were talking about Christian Scott. Uh, not uh, who, what was that? What was that? I didn't. Huh? Did, did, I, did, did someone Don say Ellis. Don Ellis? Don, Don oh. Ellis. Don, Don Ellis? Oh. I've Sorry, heard of that. I've heard, I've heard that name before. Quick, quick, quick thing. Um, I just want to say if anyone's looking at the tribute bands for him, they're all ass. Uh, <laughs> the, ori- the, so they, oh, it's, it's actually really sad. So they got the original Don Ellis band back together and they got uh, the second trumpet player. Ah, shit, I used to know his name. Um, shit. But anyway, he's, like, super old, and he's trying to, like, hit all these really high notes. He's got a really strong articulation, and he just, like, misses it all, and it's really sad. Um, so if you want to be sad, go listen to the the get-together, the reunion of the Don Ellis band, because it's huh. just sad. Because um, he, uh, Don Ellis died pretty young, uh, I think at 44, uh, from heart disease, but uh, oh, typical damn. jazz story. Yep. Shit. Um, and then oh my gosh, sorry, my I got a very bad Charlie horse. Um, anyway, uh, da, 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 Adam Rappa, who uh, Lowell is a is a lead trumpet player, and I I, I don't really like him, but he has he his, has really good tone. I think he has really good time. He does. He does. It's because of the Monet. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, he, he has an interest. He's on his own thing. horn brand now, I think. I think it's called Lotus Horns. Does anybody know what like horn a... Chet Baker played? No. Holton? Martin or, Committee. Or, or if his horn had anything to do with his plan. Is this, Probably not. Is this a trivia question? No. This is just me uh, being halfway no, enthusiastic. Wait, no. What it, what he, played a, actually, he played a Martin <laughs> committee. Okay, thank you. At least I mean, the, also, oh wait, that was I, in the fifties. I don't know. Also, ja- when, like, I don't know anything about horns, really. I don't either. If Randy the was thing on, I here, know was that's a, a good website. The <laughs> only thing I know is that I've played a few people's instruments that haven't been my own, and it's been very few. It's been like maybe three maximum of other people's horns. And at first, it's always that like new feeling. The first, like you know. 30 seconds. Yeah, oh, you're like, man, oh, this, this feels is better. great. This is yeah. a cool ass horn. I want this one. And then, literally, exactly. after you've done that one run through or two of whatever section you're on in, in in rehearsal, you know, you're like, nope, take this thing back. I don't want this thing. Yeah. Get it away from me. I'm so, always right. complaining how I can't find equipment. And then the upright bassist just looks at me in disgust. Oh, dude. Yeah. Don't even get me started on bass stuff. But the, it's like the trumpet is so important with your sound you have to get used to the horn that you're playing you know and if you go to play same with mouthpieces because oh absolutely just imagine the best trumpet player you've ever heard has to play a random horn for the night for their show you know what i mean yeah so like it it the monets i don't know i've never played one i've played a stradivarius a yamaha i've played a zeno from i mean yeah, i've played I'm a, a box, box stradivarius a yamaha zeno and i was i wasn't that impressed with them no, what do you like, what, okay, this, what do you play? Cool. It's just a shiny horn. I have a uh, oh, okay. an actually a pretty older horn. It's a CG Con 8B. Um, it's from like the 60s. I know that Freddie Hubbard and Severinsen used the one. Um, but uh, I actually got it at like a Goodwill for a hundred bucks. <laughs> oh nice. wow! So yeah, it's pretty. It's a little beat up. I've I've had it to a shop and it's been reshined and you know worked on a little bit. There's like a teensy little hole somewhere in it, which is why I have this lush velvety airy tone um but <laughs> it's the secret <laughs> it's the secret <laughs> you just get a little tiny hole in your lead pipe uh from what looks to be about three or four corrections to this thing but aside from that uh i have this old horn and like every time i try these new ones i'm like this thing is uh, i don't want it i give me back this old thing 
And I, the only thing that I've found that makes it even better is just the of the biggest fucking mouthpiece I can get my hands on, <laughs> which it's, is a Bach One right now. This is like a toilet bowl. It's the best thing on the planet. I love it. Wow. It's hard to know unless you have like a lot of access to horns, which I do, I don't. I mean, I thought my because I, I play on a Bach Strad. 1984 before they switched over to china and you know it's like the standard professional horn like for yeah. whatever i f like i thought it was good back then or i mean i was naive i was in high school and i just haven't gotten a new horn because i don't have the cash but it's just like i fucking hate it now i think it sounds too concerty i mean it might you know it could always be me or my mouthpiece but i really feel like i need a better horn i i hate the slotting on this and this is gross. I, I don't. It sounds too metal. Hmm. But you know, that's. There, there I mean, that be, could. It could be it me. Could, it could be the mouthpiece. You never know. I think it was a great horn a to learn thing. of. Mouthpiece yeah. uh, matters probably more a than a lot more, more than, than people than horn. think. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I definitely it. agree. I do feel like there's, I there's parts of my horn specifically. I'm like that is definitely the horn and not my mouthpiece. But it's yeah, I I'm not arguing that mouthpiece mm -hmm. is definitely a bigger consequence. Yeah, I still I, use a seven C. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, no, you were ripping on no, it earlier. Really? What should I, I? I haven't like really experimented much, other than like using a lead mouthpiece. Play right, my so jet tone BC. <laughs> well, here's the question: Is it is it easier for you to play? Well, clearly it's easier to play lower notes. But do you have right. a hard time with higher notes? Uh. Uh, y yeah. Sh generally, yes. Well, well, then there's there's two ways you can go about it. You can either get a mouthpiece that's shallower so that your air resistance is making it easier to hit these notes. Or you or could you fucking can get, a get good. Or, that. <laughs> or you yeah. can get a mouthpiece that's a little wider so that you can put more lip into it mm. and your air has less, uh, or air has more area to go through, you know? Yeah, I feel yeah. like you would want the opposite, Sweet. wouldn't you? Because I, I feel like whatever the you rim, can put more air into the horn that way. You know right. what I mean? Rather oh, than having maybe. to suppress it all into a smaller aperture, your aperture can be bigger and you can put more air into it. Yeah, I might. I could use maybe more room from my lips, actually. That's why I play on this toilet bowl thing, because I, I try right. to keep as large of, of a relaxed aperture as possible every time I play. Because I, I have really... a pressure problem, remember? And I told you I right. just like yeah. played fucking l l way too low pedal tones like all I, the time. I'm of the recent group that strongly believes aperture is the key to everything. And it's not just air, 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 air. Maybe maybe to get that aperture, but I just based on my own feeling, I just I really feel like aperture is almost everything. Well, I mean it's especially, that, especially that's after piece, you know. after uh a professor uh the very well accomplished trumpet player went up to me during my audition, grabbed my face and said, "Your muscles are weak," and I just was like, "Oh wow! Oh, okay, shit! <laughs> oh, well, um, back to your seven C thing though. Uh, right, it's really hard for me because I haven't tried any other brands of mouthpiece. Like uh, I've only stuck with Vincent Bach. I've had a right. It started with I started with seven C and then I went to a 3C, and then a 1C, and then to a 1. So I've just progressively gotten a larger mouthpiece from the same brand. So I don't know what hmm. any other ones are like. Right. A really good way, I know Andy was talking about, he doesn't have any shops around him. Um, maybe this, maybe this, you'll have the same problem with this, but a really good way to, to just try out new equipment is to just uh, buy used from people. Just like look on Craigslist or something. Yeah. You can, sometimes yeah. you'll see people getting rid of mouthpieces for 10 bucks. Sick. Yeah, kind of not. I'm kind of in a small town until the fall when I moved to Toronto for school, so that's kind of where it is. There's like zero mouthpieces within a, a long distance. Yeah, trying um, out different equipment it's, it's kind of a difficult thing for musicians yeah, usually. I really want to be able to just get up close and personal with some gear and actually get to see what it's like. Back to Don Ellis, real quickly. I wanted to finish <laughs> my thought. Um. <laughs> The so the other so the Adam Rappa tribute band, mm. you can uh, you can probably go on there and see some of my angry comments on the YouTube videos saying how 
they didn't have the wow. tempo set very well, or uh, this sounds like shit. Also, like Adam um, Rappa's tone is like on almost the complete other side of the spectrum from exactly. like Don Ellis's. He sounds nothing like him at all. And and uh, Thomas Ganch did a tribute, and I will say it was respectable. I didn't dig it enough to like buy any of the tunes or any of that. Uh, he did do. Uh, he inserted a part of his of the Don Ellis solo on Bulgarian Bulge into his own, which I very much appreciated. It's one of my favorite uh, solos. But uh, Thomas Gans definitely did a way better job. Um, with tone on Don Ellis, I would say it's very unique. Um, and it's probably because he uses a fucking shallow-ass mouthpiece. And his uh, primary teacher at least from what I've read, um, uh, given my little sources, was uh, Cat Anderson. He took lessons from Cat Anderson. But uh, his tone is, like, very weak. And it actually serves him well when he goes into the extreme high register because it's not, like, piercing your fucking ears. Like, he goes up to a fucking triple something in Sidoni, Sindon- I believe it is. And it's so airy and weak that you can actually listen to it without your ears bleeding. It's beautiful and wonderful. But he is like, I would not want my trumpet to sound like that at all. Um, When I really get into practicing, I sound more like Lee Morgan because that's most of the tunes I play. And my goal is to get a Lester uh, Bowie kind of sound. But yeah, Don Ellis, I not my favorite trumpet Uh. player. I love his improvisation and ideas not my favorite trumpet player definitely my favorite musician though absolutely nice Mm. um i i think personally my favorite high note dude if i can drop this one was is doc severinson he doesn't really scream up there way too high compared to some people but his tone is just masterful i love it it's he, it's so smooth. It's like the way that he goes in between all of these notes, they're just, it's fluid. And um, it's not choppy hardly ever when he's playing high note stuff. Fluid. So, uh, yeah. That's, a, them that's fluid how I describe notes. Bill Chase's sound. It's got well, a lot I'm sorry, of I stole your word. Let me use another one. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm <laughs> saying that's fine. <laughs> no. I, I'm trying but, uh, to, Vaughn, listen, you should listen. I'll send you the two tunes that are. It's really just the heads that are decent. The soloing is just awful. But Von Nark is just is just pudding. He's just deep in the pudding. It, oh <laughs> gosh, I don't even know what it is. It's so rich. Chocolate. High, high note. High note. Trumpet player. Dizzy. dizzy. Okay. No. No. Okay. Let me tell you. I. Coast. I have strong opinions on Dizzy. And Tell me. It, it should be known that I don't like Bebop anymore. I feel like uh, what? it's just very colorless, and you I don't, don't like, like it. I don't. That's okay. Can you shred some Bebop, Andy? It's a fucking... Because uh, uh. if you can't, don't hate it. That's all. <laughs> C major doesn't count. That's not C major. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> um, that yeah, I guess you could you could call that bebop. That's uh, but no, I'm a hard bop. I'm a hard bopper. But anyway, that's that's not my problem with dizzy. Just that's it's just important to keep that in mind. Okay. Um, and this is I do have like I have like a a few albums of dizzy that I absolutely love. But the one thing I feel that Dizzy does a shit ton, and maybe it's just the songs I've listened to, but he goes really high, plays like a few high staccato notes, and then just goes down and then just dicks around in the middle register. But it's... I think... And it's like every solo... I think Dizzy makes a lot more sense Fair. when you think about uh, how he was kind of like a counterpoint to Charlie Parker, who was like very s- straight. Uh, you know, he was a very polished, 
uh, player, and then you have like goofy Dizzy Gillespie with his hat and his big cheeks, just <laughs> fooling nuts. around next to him. I think I think that kind of explains why he is the way he is a little just, bit more. Boodoo, salt, I never salt, go back to nuts. Georgia. Boodoo, I never go back to Georgia. <laughs> Boodoo. Uh, but uh, I also don't like John Faddis, so that's another reason I don't like Dizzy. But, uh, or, I mean, Arturo, I'm kind of midway. Uh, his, oh, has anyone played on a Dizzy horn? No. No. I, I want to know, like, how much that changes your sound or, like, what it makes it sound like. Because oh, I've heard people it. play it. What? I'm, oh. I was being an asshole. I said I've, it just points it upward. I've played uh, an Adam's horn that's like that. Uh, it was, it was I, I heavy. feel like Christian Scott has his tilted just because of how far down he fucking puts his neck. Yeah, he likes to bend you know, down. Yeah. Dizzy said, I think I saw an interview of Dizzy saying that for him it was just better self-monitoring of the trumpet. It was right at ear level. Yeah, really? it was huh. It was about how, like, it, the way it comes back, to the way the sound comes back to him, he can hear his sound better than yeah. if it was I think it started by an accident, like a horn getting bumped or something, probably. Uh, but, yeah, it was at Chris not. and Dale's or something, the story is. And he had his trumpet out, and he was watching the show, and the dancers fell on it. Um, and then he just played it, and he's like, ah, this is pretty cool. And then he uh, uh, had Holton, I believe it's Holton, he's like, make me this thing. And they're like, okay. Um, and they were like, sure. But, uh... His his sound is super distinct. You could always tell when Dizzy's playing, like yeah. not like just his tone is just. It has yeah, like yeah. it has cushioning, but it's different than Monet. Way different. John yeah, Faddis sometimes sounds like him a little bit, like especially when he was playing with them. You can hear yeah. the influence there. I like Dizzy. Kind of sounds to me happy. He sounds like a happy trumpet player. <laughs> I kinda yeah, think I could agree with that. Whereas Chet Baker Maybe sounds like so sad boy times. It sounds like sad boy. The thrill is gone. Gone. Um, yeah, like Lee Morgan, I definitely describe. So there's two sides to Lee Morgan. And every time I say this, the second one, I think of uh, his album Candy. But like Lee Morgan, there's his angry fucking sound, which is like Night in Tunisia which is so angry and just overblown, which is, ha! And then there's uh, his cute, there's his cute sound, like on personality. The, uh, Siora? And then he actually does the, the, the. He does the very cute uh, grace notes. Uh, I love it, but uh, yeah, I I, I, I definitely think there's uh, moods to different sounds. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So do you think that as a trumpet player, you should pursue going after one sound or being able to be versatile and sound like anybody you want to? Yeah, like fucking Arturo Sandoval, where he fucking, have you seen that video? He, I'll have to link it. He oh, like I think I... is playing with a bunch of kids and then he like cranks his head and then plays a different style. I think people I've heard of people told me they hate it. me for that video. They're like, the video sucks ass. And I'm like, I think it's pretty cool. I would um, like to see it. I think you because you showed them a video of Arturo. Yeah, that. maybe that's kind of a shoot <laughs> the messenger. <laughs> shoot, <laughs> shoot the messenger situation. Uh, I think it. I think there's something to appreciate for someone who like knows exactly what they want <laughs> to sound like, and they're just working to that. Uh, I also think it's valuable to to be able to be, uh, you know, uh, responsive to your to your uh, environment. For sure. Absolutely. Wait, quick thing. Wait, how are we doing on time? Um, Has it been like an hour? Yeah, we're at about an hour and a half from when I started recording. I think it's Fuck, an hour and is, fifteen. This is right now. I th yeah, I think it's hour and fifteen. This is the most fun I've had. It's gone by so quickly. Shit. I think we have to wrap it up, boys. Wow. Fuck. I guess we'll have to have more trumpet episodes because I have a shit ton more I wanted to say. All right. Well,
Well, this has been the Woodshed Podcast with Eric, Jacob, and Leroy. We'll catch you guys later. Ha <laughs> ha